Yes, Lord. in the name of Jesus of Christ we come. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity. We thank you, God, for another chance, another privilege. We thank you, for God, for another opportunity just to honor you and praise you. God, we realize that you are holy and we are unholy. We realize, Father God, that because of you, Father God, we are who we are. We thank you, Father God, for seeing fit to save us. Seeing fit to move upon our lives. We thank you, God, for choosing us yes. to serve you. Thank you. Lord, we realize, Father God, that we're undeserving. We realize, Father God, that we are not clean enough. We are not spiritual enough. Yes. And certainly we are not holy enough. Yes, God. But we thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For what he has done for us on a skull hill called Calvary. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us and keeping thank us, you, for keeping us focused, for keeping us faithful, yes, keeping us walking in your will and your way. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless this moment. Yes, bless us, Father God, that we will speak for you, that we will worship you, that you will get all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Yes, speak to us through your word today, Father God. Remind us that you have brought us and you have kept us. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. There is none like him there is none there is nobody there is not a one like him the songwriter said he searched the world over and there is nobody no one greater than him there is no one greater than the god we serve hallelujah to the lamb for this celebration on today let me call your attention to the book of revelation chapter 3 in the New Testament, at the back of the book, it is Revelation chapter 3. I'll be lifting for today verses 7 and 8. Verses 7 and 8. Verses 7 and 8. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. The book is Revelation. It's in the far back of your Bible. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. When you found it, you will discover these words. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says, He who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, he who shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word and have not denied my name. I want to talk about the faithful God in the faithful church. Amen. The faithful God in the faithful church. Sister Davis has shared with us the history of the New Beginning Church here in Southeast Houston. She has shared with us that the church is 28 years old today. She has shared with us that the celebration ought to be on right now. Yes, we ought to celebrate, we ought to rejoice, we ought to, to honor God for what God has already done.
For certainly God has done great things through the New Beginning Church. Amen. Sister Davis has said in her introduction that we have not the chance, not the opportunity, and we cannot take it for granted to steal God's glory. Yes. It is God who deserves the glory. It is God who has kept us. It is God who has kept us together. Amen. It is God who has made life what it is today. And I'm grateful, I'm thankful that God has included me in his plan. He could have done it without me. He could have moved upon the lives of the people without me. He could have done all that he has accomplished without me. I'm just thankful to God this morning that God has allowed me to pray, to play just a small, minute role in what he is doing in Third Ward, outside of Third Ward, in Southeast Houston. I thank God. I thank God that he has blessed us. I thank God that he has moved in our church where lives have been changed. Yes. Hope has been renewed. Marriages have been spared. Amen. It's only because God has done it. Amen. Yes, God has opened some doors. Yes, God has closed some doors. Yes, God is still on the throne, regardless of what we go through, regardless of what we've done. I thank God for who he is and what he has already done. I'm excited this morning about what God has done. I'm excited about what he's doing right now. I'm excited about what God is going to do. In the last 17 years, during this 28-year 20, period, God has tremendously blessed us. God has continued to walk with us, and we've continued to walk with God. And today, I want to tell you about that faithful God. He is faithful in all that he does. He will keep his promises. He will do what he said he would do, and he will do it in a righteous way. The God we serve is such an awesome God. The God we serve is a God who has made a way out of no way. The God that we serve has brought us all the way. As Sister Davis was reading partial histories of this church, I began to reflect on the fact that it took God only 40 people, uh, 22 of them were adults, to build this building, to accomplish this defeat, to do what God has done for us, and I'm grateful that God has done it. God has taken a little bit, and he's made much. We don't deserve to be here. We wasn't rich enough to be here. God just took a little bit, and he made much. Because he is the faithful God. Because he's the faithful God, we keep moving in the way that God would have us to move. We keep giving in the way that God allows us to give. God has blessed the New Beginning Church for 28 years. And we're looking to God. We're looking to God to continue to walk with us. Even in a pandemic, God has shown himself to be faithful to the New Beginning Church. Even in a pandemic, God has, has spared the people of the New Beginning Church. Even in a pandemic, God has walked with us and, and kept us in the bad times and the good times. Even though we had family members to pass away, even though we had sickness to come upon us, God has been faithful to us. He has kept us. He has blessed us. And just because we don't have what we want to have, or we haven't gone where we want to go, and just because we have not done and accomplished what we want to accomplish, God has been faithful to us. We ought not shake our head. We ought not pump our fists at God. We ought not tell God that, God, you have not blessed us. Because if you're breathing, God has blessed you. If you don't have a tube down your throat, God has blessed you. If you have a tube down your throat and you're still able to recollect what I'm saying, God has blessed you. And because God has blessed you, we ought to keep on watching with God. Keep on walking with God. Keep on witnessing for God. Keep on doing what God has called us to do because he is the faithful God. I woke up this morning because he's faithful. I made my way to the house of prayer because he's faithful. I'm able to raise my voice and honor him because he is the faithful God. And the great people of the New Beginning Church has accepted me as their leader. That shows that he is the faithful God. Amen. 
I don't deserve to be here. My life is not clean enough. My, my attitude is not good enough. My skills are not great enough. It's only because of God's mercy and God's grace that I'm able to stand before you today. Amen. And I'm thankful to God. He has given us another chance. God looks at us and he blesses us in spite of us. In spite of our meanness. In spite of our neglect, God keeps right on blessing us. My prayer for us today here at the New Beginning Church is to always be a faithful church. Always stand for God. Always walk in God's word. Always elevate God and watch what God is able to do. He is able to be faithful even when we are not faithful. I tell you, God has been more faithful to us than we've been to him. Because, you know, we'll take any excuse and shut out on God. Right. We'll do whatever we want to do, but when it's time to honor God, we won't be faithful to him. During this broadcast, there are some who are sitting and listening. There are some who are raising their hands in the household. There are some that are listening even in the building and raising their hand. We ought to be faithful to God in our worship. Not only should we be faithful to God in our worship, we ought to be faithful to God in our works. Our works ought to exemplify the godly God that we have. Our works ought to be some where others can look at us and see the almighty God in us. Not only should we be a godly in our worship, we ought to be faithful in our worship. Not only should we be, God, we be godly and faithful in our works, but we ought to be faithful in our witness. We ought to tell men, women, boys, and girls about how good God has already been. And we need to tell him about the speaker of the text. His name is Jesus. In the book of Revelation, the Bible begins by the apostle John saying that he heard behind him a great voice. And it was a voice of one who sound like a great trumpet. His name is Jesus. He says to John, whatever you hear, write it and put it in a book. And when you write it and put it in a book, send it to the seven churches in Asia Minor. In this chapter, he talks about the church of Sardis. We don't want to be like the church of Sardis. The church of Sardis had a name that they were living, but the church was really dead. You know, there are some churches even today who have a name that they're living. But the church is really dead. Uh, the, God says to the church at Sardis, he says, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are really dead. Yeah, God performs an autopsy. God performs a, an, an examination on this church. And he comes back with the report. And he gives it to the church. And he says, you are a dead church when you got a reputation of being alive. He already, he already condemned a corrupt church. Now he condemns a dead church. God has already, uh, uh, he already identified the loveless church. He also identified the compromising church. He also identified the, the persecuted church. And now today he looks at the faithful church. My question to you today, are we faithful, New Beginning? Have we been faithful? Are we going to be faithful? Are we going to use excuses to not be faithful? Because after he deals with this faithful church, he deals with a lukewarm church. <laughs> he deals with a church that's neither hot or cold. And he says that I will spew you out of my mouth. If you are lukewarm, our focus today, our focus today is on the faithful church. Mm -hmm. The faithful church was not a lukewarm church. The faithful church was not a corrupt church. The faithful church was not a church that had a report that they were alive, but they were really dead. The, the faithful church was not a, a compromising church. The faithful church was not a loveless church. Matter of fact, the faithful church is a loving church. The faithful church is a church that loves. Matter of fact, it's the, it, is, it is the church at Philadelphia. 
It is the city of brotherly love. It is the church of brotherly love. We get the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, from a brotherly love. It is a philia, a filio. It is the church of brotherly love. So he identifies this church of brotherly love, and, and I would like to believe today that our church, the New Beginning Church, I would like to believe today that there are other churches that are a faithful church. He says, John, when you write, write to this church at Philadelphia. And when you write, make sure you write the letter to the angel of the church. Well, pastors, it, it points us out here. It, it lets us know that God is going to hold every pastor responsible. The angel of the church is going to be responsible for what God has written. Amen. Yeah, he writes the letter. He, said, he says, and, and to the angel of the church of Philadelphia. What he's saying is to the angel of the church of New Beginning. He's saying to the pastor of the church of New Beginning. He says to us today, guess who's talking to you? First of all, he says Jesus is talking. He says Jesus, the one who is holy. He says Jesus, the one who is true. He says Jesus, the one who has the key of David. He, he says Jesus, the one who opens and the one who closes doors. Jesus, Jesus is the one who, who has the authority. Jesus is the one who, who, is, who has the prerogative. Jesus is the one who has the ability to close your doors and open your doors. Now only Jesus, he says, he says Jesus is holy and Jesus is true. He says Jesus is holy. He is set apart. He, he is different. John chapter 3 picks this thought up where he says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his only unique son, his only true son, his only begotten son, his only holy son. Yeah, we, we have been made holy through Jesus Christ, but without Jesus, we are not holy. Matter of fact, we don't have a holy bone in our bodies because Jesus has put us and he has put us aside and he is the one who keeps us separated from ourselves and separated from our deeds. He has made us holy. Yeah, when Jesus died on Calvary, he made it possible for us to go straight to the veil of the temple. He made it possible for us to go through that veil because he tore that veil from top to bottom. He made it possible for us to approach God for ourselves. Yes, right. Yeah, we're looking at a faithful church, a church of brotherly love, a, a church that loves each other. And not only do they love each other, they love the Lord. Yeah, yeah, we're not a church unless we love the Lord. We're not a church unless we love the brethren and the sisters. We're not a church unless we have love that runs from heart to heart and breast to breast. If we're not a loving church, then we are just something that has been accumulated that we call church. We're just another organization. The church is an organism. It's a living, a living, breathing, viable in entity. It's not an organism. It's, a organ, it's not an organization. It's an organism. Yeah. It's a living, viable, breathing band of believers who have chosen to get together and call this place the church. Yeah, yeah there's a church. There's a place called church. It is the building in which we reside for worship. It is the building that we occupy for worship. It is a location. It is a building. It is, a, it is the, the wood. It is, it is the wall. It, it is the cement. It is the chairs. It's the place we call church. It's where the believers meet. We, we get together. Uh, in Hebrews, it says that we ought not forsake the assembly of coming together in the local church. But yeah, there is a a body that he talks about here to the church of Philadelphia. It is the body of Christ. It is the people that is called church. These people who have turned their lives over to Jesus 
It is the church. It is that group that have made up the church. That's what he's talking about this morning. He's talking about this, this, this group of people, this body that is now the church. It is the body, the new beginning church. It, it is the body of Jesus Christ that has come together, believing on one Lord, believing on one baptism, believing on one truth. He is the true King of kings and the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus Without that, we don't have a church. Without that, we don't have, uh, even if we gather and do some things, we don't have a church unless we're born again, unless we're saved by the Holy Spirit, unless God has blessed us, then we don't have a church. I thank God for the last 28 years, the New Beginning Church has been a church. The New Beginning Church has not been an organization. It has not been a social club. It has not been, a, been a, a resort area. It has been a church where people love each other, where people get together in fellowship with each other, where people like talking to each other. Thank God for the church. Amen. Jesus says that upon the confession of Peter that Jesus is the Son of God, Upon that confession, Jesus has built his church. And the very gates of hell should not fight, shall, shall not win in the fight against the church. The very gates of hell will not prevail. The very gates of hell will not be successful. Oh, it doesn't mean that things won't come up against the church. It doesn't mean that the church won't have a battle that they have to go through. It doesn't mean that the church won't have doors shut in its face. It doesn't mean that the church won't have problems that they're going through. It just simply means that the devil in hell cannot abide and cannot prevail against the church. Uh, over these last 28 years, yeah, the devil has raised his ugly head. The devil has even tried to shut it down. And the devil even tried to use those on the inside to shut it down. But Jesus says, Jesus says, Jesus, the Lamb of God, Jesus, the true one, Jesus, the holy one, Jesus, the one with the key of David, he said that it shall not prevail. God has been faithful to us. God has been tremendously faithful to us. God has blessed us in spite of us. It is not because we were so good. It's not because we were so holy. He blessed us because he is faithful. He's a faithful God. I tell you, he's a faithful God. He, he allows us to get sick and call on him. And he blesses us even though we haven't been faithful to him. He comforts us when we bury our sick and bury our dead, bury our loved one. He comforts us. He sits beside the bed of every parent that's waiting on their child to wake up. He goes to the funeral home with every parent that buries their child. He goes to the funeral home with every loved one that buries theirs. He is the comforter. He is God himself. He is faithful to us. He's faithful to us because, as a matter of fact, we don't really deserve to be here. We don't deserve to be here, but it's because God is faithful. Because God has blessed us and he keeps on blessing us. That's why we are here. He says that, that he is true. He is holy. He has the keys of David. God has made a divinity covenant with his people. Jesus is the one who has the keys to that covenant. God says, says that he will, he would present us holy. We can only be presented holy through Jesus. Jesus has the keys. It represents the authority that Jesus has. It represents the importance of us walking with Jesus because he's the one who has the authority. He has the keys. Anytime somebody has keys, it's the authority that comes along with it that makes the difference says to us today, he who opens and no one shuts, he who shuts and no one is able to open. Jesus has a way of doing things that no one can undo. No one can renege it. No one can cancel it. 
No one can fight it. If Jesus opens the door, then the door is open until Jesus shuts the door. He's the one who shuts the door. And when Jesus shuts the door, you might as well move on. Crying won't get it. When Jesus shuts the door, you might as well stop weeping and wailing. When Jesus shuts the door, the door is shut. I'm reminded of Noah building his ark. One year after the other, they made fun of Noah. He kept right on building. He kept right on building his ark. He said to them, it's going to rain. One day it's going to rain. One day it's going to rain. Yeah. And people ignored his message. But then he went into the ark and shut the door. The songwriter declares that when Jesus shuts the door, yeah. no man can open the door. Yes. Noah goes into the ark. He shuts the door. People begin to cry. People begin to beg to get in. They couldn't get in for Noah says, God has the key. Right. And I can't let you in. Right. I've been warning you. Oh, I've been telling you yeah. it's going to rain. Yeah. Let me say to America, uh -huh. America is raining. Yeah. America is raining. We got to be faithful to God. Yeah. God has been faithful to us. It is raining. How you know it's raining, preacher? When you have a guy who they will build a golden statue to, and men are bowing down to a golden statue, I tell you it's going to rain. Not only is it going to rain, it's going to rain some more. It's going to rain some more, and it's raining already. I tell you it's going to rain when men choose to walk away. From the God that we serve. When we choose to walk away. From the God who's been faithful to us. I want to remind you. It's raining. It's raining. And you can't sing the song. That Prince song. Purple Rain. It's raining evilness. It's raining prosperity. That is not godly prosperity. Just because people are doing what they want to do. Just because they got the money to do what they want to do, just because they can act any way they want to act, doesn't mean it's of God. Just because you are being blessed right now, doesn't mean you're doing it God's way. God is concerned about your works. He's concerned about your worship. He is concerned about how you walk with him. God is concerned about how you live. God is concerned. I want to tell you today, on this 28th anniversary of the New Beginning Church. You better get right because God is calling on us. God is asking us to be faithful as he has been faithful. The Bible says that Jesus will open the door and no man can shut it. The Bible says that Jesus can close the door and no man can open it. I want to tell you today, you need to trust Jesus. Amen. You need to trust him and bless him. Even in the text it says, you have just a little strength in your weaknesses. You better trust Jesus. He says to the church of Philadelphia that I honor you because you've been faithful. Even though you had just a little strength, you kept the word of God. He says to the church at Philadelphia, he says to the church at New Beginning, just make sure even when you have no strength, even when you have a little strength, whatever you do, keep God's word. Amen. Keep God's word burning on the hearts of men. Keep God's word. God deliver us from men of God who will stand and not proclaim God's word. We got to make sure that we become like Joshua and say, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. We have to become like Joshua says to us. We got to make sure we stay with the book. The Bible says God honors the church at Philadelphia because they kept the word. We got to keep the word burning on the altar of our heart. 
We got to listen to the word. We're in the middle of our daily listening. We're in the middle of our daily listening. We're in Ruth. We're listening to the word of God. We've already come from Genesis to Ruth. Keep the word of God burning on the altar of your heart. Amen. We also have our daily worship of Sunday school, daily ministry of Sunday school, the daily word of God. You got to keep the word on the altar of your heart. Somebody's already said, Pastor Davis, you got us listening on one hand. You got us reading on the other hand. You got us writing down the journal on one hand. And then you got us meditating on one hand. Baby, I ain't got you doing nothing. I know that's not good English, but I don't have you doing anything. It's what God has called us to do. God says to the church of Philadelphia, you have kept my word. You have walked in my word. You've been saturated with my word. If you don't have time for the word, you don't have time. We got to keep the word. Keep the word of God. God commends this church for keeping his word. Then he says to this church of Philadelphia, you have not denied my name. You have not denied my name, even when you had little strength, even when you couldn't really pick your own self up. You have not denied my name. All over this world today, people are denying the name of Jesus Christ. People are getting in cliques and hanging out with the cliques rather than hanging out with Jesus. They have denied his name. They have, they have denied the power thereof. They have forgotten the fact that Philippians says that God has given Jesus a name above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue must confess. Don't deny his name. My brother and sister, don't deny his name. Hold on to his name. Stay with his name. Stay with his name. Trust in his name. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. There is no name above this name. Don't deny his name. Many all over the world are denying his name. And even when they pray and they say that they are Christians, they will say something like, in whatever name you're in. I want to tell you today, if you're going to get a prayer through, you better pray in the name of Jesus. You need, if you're going to live right, you need to go with the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what's new. It doesn't matter what's popular. It doesn't matter who's doing what. It doesn't matter if it's in the executive boardroom or not. If you're going to pray, you need to pray in the name of Jesus. Don't deny his name. Peter denied him. And Peter suffered the consequences. But if you've denied his name, you can be like Peter today. Peter repented of his sins, and Peter got it right. You need to make sure that you hold on to his name. There is not a name above this name. It is the name of Jesus that keeps us strong. It is the name of Jesus that we are complimented by God that we ought to keep his name. So he says to this church at, Phil Philipp or this church at Philadelphia, he says to them, though you've had a little strength, though you wasn't as strong as you used to be, and let me tell you, there have been some times in the last 160 days, there have been some times in the last 365 days, there have been some times in the last 200 years that we didn't have all of our strength, but we had Jesus. <laughs> I thank God for the seasoned saints. I, I thank God for the saints. That they didn't have a third grade education, but they had Jesus. Let me tell you, your education can't get you there. Your money can't help you because you can have all the money in the world, but when Jesus don't bless you, you're not blessed at all. Don't deny him. Don't decline him. Don't compromise him. Don't give, be in a point where you go do it in front of somebody and don't live for the Lord in front of somebody else. Amen. He ends this chapter by saying there are those who have, who have a name that they are Jews. There are those who say they have, they are Jews. There are those who are faking it till they make it. He says, I'm going to deal with them. 
He says in verse number 11, I'm coming quickly. He says, I'm coming quickly. And he says to us who are faithful, hold fast to what you, hold fast to what you have, hold fast to what you've been doing, hold fast to what you have. Look at what God is doing. Hold fast to what you have. He says to this church, you've been faithful. Don't let this environment force you to be unfaithful. Don't let people mistreat you to compromise, make you compromise being faithful to the Lord. Don't let the coronavirus compromise your faithfulness to God. Even in this virus situation, we ought to be looking every day to see how we can be faithful to God, how we can be faithful to his church, how we can love on other people. We ought to be faithful people. Don't compromise it. He says, my command... My command to persevere is present. I command you that you continue to persevere. I command you that you continue to hold fast to what you have. I command you that you continue to walk with the Lord. Don't let anybody take it away from you. He says, hold fast to what you have. Amen. That no one may take your crown. We got a crown that we're looking forward to. We got a crown one day. God is going to reward us for our faithfulness. Amen. Let him reward you for your faithfulness. Let it be said that he was faithful. Amen. Don't be guilty of them having to lie at your funeral. Amen. Talking about he was faithful. Yeah, he was faithful to denying God. He was faithful to not doing it God's way. She did not do it God's way. And then you expect the preacher to lie about it on Sunday, on, on Saturday, on Wednesday or Thursday, whatever your funeral day is. He says, don't let him take away your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. God is going to make you somebody that others look up to. Somebody, this pillar holds together that that is elevated. Yeah, we got to lift up Jesus. We got to make sure that we lift him up because we need to make sure that as we lift Jesus, men are drawn to Jesus. He who overcomes, I will give him a pillar in the, I will, I will give, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. You will be with God. You will stay with God. You will walk with God. I will write on him the name of my God, in the name of the city of my God, the New Jerusalem, which come down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. I want to tell you this morning, it pays to be faithful to God. Amen. It pays to be faithful to God. Don't lie to the preacher that you're faithful. Don't lie to the people that you're faithful. God knows when you're faithful. Amen. He even he raises the he raises the excuse. That you, I wasn't strong enough, God. He takes away the excuse that I can't do it. He removes the excuse that I wasn't able to do it. He says to the church at Philadelphia, even when you had a little strength, you kept to the word. You walked with the word. And not only that, you never denied me. Don't deny Jesus. Don't deny God. Don't deny the Holy Spirit. If you can hear my voice today, the day that you hear his voice, you ought to hearken unto him. You need to keep his word. Walk in his word. Live with his word. Be saturated in his word. Walk with him daily. Read the word. Listen to the word. Journal the word. It's, it, is no, it is no coincidence that we're walking through the Bible this year. If anything is going to keep us strong, it's going to be the word of God that keeps us strong. It's going to be the word. It's going to be God's word that keeps us strong. Even when we have no strength, we got to depend on God's word. 
Even when things are not going right, we got to depend on God's word. Even when things are going just like we like them, we still have to depend on God's word. Because it's God's word that keeps us. It's God's word that blesses us. He says, Jesus, the Holy One. Jesus, the true one. Jesus, the one who has the key of David. This phrase, the key of David, means that Jesus has the authority. Jesus has the capability and the ability. First of all, he has the capability, the ability to usher us on into heaven. If you're going to go to heaven, you got to go through Jesus. He's, he's opening the door for us. If you go through him, you can make it. If you go through Jesus, you can make it on in. But if you deny his name, if you don't confront him, you can't confront God. If you don't walk with him, you can't walk with God. And don't use the excuse, I can't, because he eliminates it in the text. He says, when the Philadelphia church did not have strength, they had just a little strength, they stayed with Jesus. Jesus, the Lamb of God. Jesus, the horse pouring in the valley. Stay with Jesus, the Lamb of God. Stay with Jesus, the one who is the lily of the valley. Stay with Jesus. He's the one that keeps us. He's the one that walks with us. Over 2,000 years ago, he gave his life on a skull hill called Calvary. His name is Jesus, I tell you. His name is Jesus. He died. Mean men killed him. They took him off the cross. He died. They took him off the cross. He died. They took him off the cross. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because early that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. If you can believe the story today, you can be saved right here, right now. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to come to Jesus. The door, the door that Jesus opened. The door is open. The door is open. You need to trust him. Even if you got a little strength. Even if you can barely make it. When this world is looking like it's going to hell in a handbasket. You better trust him today. His name is Jesus. The door is open. The door is open. Thank God for the New Beginning Church. The church of brotherly love. Thank God for the New Beginning Church. The church that keeps his word. Thank God for the New Beginning Church. The church that has not denied the name of Jesus. When they killed Jesus, they laid him in a barber tomb. But early that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. If you can believe this story today, you can be saved right here, right now. The door is open. Will you come? Will you trust him? Will you allow him to bless you? The door is open. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, I want to lead you to Christ in a simple prayer. Just want you to repeat after me and invite him in. Will you bow your head and invite him into your life today? Just join me in this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for, your, for our sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer, you're born again. We believe that, that Jesus has rescued you from hell. There may be others of you who, who struggle with sin, who, who dibble and dabble with sin, who has little strength. I recommend Jesus. 
the one who can make life better for you, the one who can do great things for you. I recommend him that since you've already been saved, but you're just not in fellowship with him. You have a relationship, but you're not in fellowship with him. I recommend Jesus. Let me pray with you that you would submit to him, rejoice in him. Lord Jesus, we come for those, Father God, who have a need to be recommitted, redetermined in you, Father God. We ask you to bless them now. We ask you to give them strength. We ask you to encourage them through your word. And we ask you, Father God, if they have denied Jesus Christ, that they would deny no more. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you for joining us and being a part of our church celebration. Jesus has blessed us for 28 years, and we don't take it for granted. If we don't make 30, because Jesus come back. If we don't, if we don't make 30, because he cracks the sky. It's all right, because we're going to really have some church then. On the other side, we're going to really have church. If you've received Jesus Christ, or you've recommitted your life to him today on this broadcast, Please inbox me and let me know so you and I can rejoice. And so if you are here and you don't have a church home, are you in between church home? Are you thinking about the New Beginning Church being your church home? Inbox me and let me know. I want to share with you. I want to welcome you to the family of faith at the New Beginning Church. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. And I can hear you celebrating. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gift. It is time. Hallelujah. It's time to give to the Lord. We rejoice for this time of giving. And if you're listening by way of on air, you can give. We prefer that you give by way of Zelle or P.O. Box. Our P.O. Box is NBC or New Beginning Church P.O. Box. 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 77459 77459 or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. And I do realize that some of you haven't made the transition from Cash App to Zelle. If you just have not made that transition yet and you want to contribute by way of Cash App, uh, you can contribute to dollar sign NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. Thank you so much for being a part of our service on today. Thank you for being a part of our 28th appreciation service for our church. It's a great thing for a church to make 28 years. 28 years. The devil has tried over those 28 years, but God has tremendously blessed us and he has kept us. I want to thank you for joining us today and we're going to ask you to join us at 10.30 a.m. on April the 4th. 10.30 a.m. April the 4th for our parking lot service. Please join us at 10.30 a.m. for our parking lot service where we will be outside as the weather permit, as God gives us favor. We'll be outside and we will be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It was last year that we had our message outside. We'll be joined this year by um, 
Gateway Community Church will be joining us. Pastor, Pastor Brian Watson will be joining us this year and we will have one service just like it's gonna be in heaven. So please be a part of that. Please ma'am, please sir, be a part of that. Our parking lot service on Resurrection Sunday, 8 to the 4th at 10.30 a.m. We want to continue our Bible listening, our Bible listening. We want to continue our Bible listening. Uh, we are in the book of Ruth. Uh, you should have listened all the way from Genesis to Ruth. And you you should have a whole notebook by now, stuff that you have overlooked over the years. And so go ahead and involve yourself in the Bible listening. And also, I, I sent out a text usually every Monday for our Sunday school daily reading. Our Sunday school daily reading is usually somewhere around seven to 10 verses. Come on, participate. If, I, if you're not on that text message, let me know, inbox me, let me know. I'll let you, uh, make sure that I include you and I'll let you know how we're processing through that, amen? So uh, Bible listening and our Bible reading daily. Bible listening and Bible reading daily. We celebrated 28 years today. We want to celebrate several more. A year ago, we were to celebrate our 27th year. We were here in the church and we didn't know whether we were going to be able to come back. And we did not make it back the following Sunday because the whole city, whole state, and the nation somewhat shut down. We're rejoicing today that we'll have, we have a medium by which we can meet with you. I wanna ask you to go to the New Beginning Church site, Facebook site, the one with the blue cross in the picture, in the profile. Uh, go ahead and like that page and also uh, set your notification for that New Beginning Church page so you'll be notified. We don't know the direction of Facebook at this point, so we want everybody to get every, everything in place so we can continue to have church. But those of you who are comfortable, those of you who would like to come and attend church, we can we can seat about 80 people and still be distanced. So we look forward to seeing you here in the building if you are able to to come. If, if you are you are confident that that you will be safe. We'll be taking temperatures at the door. We'll be taking your phone number for the sake of, um, of tracing and tracking. We'll be taking your temperature, your name, and your phone number at the front door uh, just to be safe. And if there's anything that takes place, we'll have your number to get in touch with you. Uh, but we can seat about 80 people with every other row, approximately every other row roped off. And, all the families will be sitting together. Family members will have to sit together, but we will have spaces between families. So if you can come to church, we'll be glad to have you here worshiping worshiping with us. And I'd like to hear some amens sometime other than seeing them written on the screen, amen. We want to continue to lift in prayer Sister Darrington and Sister Hornsby as we close out today. Thank you so much for being a part. And those of you who've been faithful in your giving, thank you for being faithful. Thank you for continuing to give to the Lord, even though you were not at this location. You've been the church. And thank you for being a part of the church. A friend of mine in Mississippi who's on the finance team at a church, Brother Donald Ray Sims, my classmate, he says there are three ways to know if people are, are members and they have to be members and they have to include all three of these things. They have to be inclusive. Number one, he says, their presence make them members. Along with their pain make them members. Along with their participation. Those three things make people members of the church and, and make them faithful to the Lord. So examine yourself. And make sure you get present, make sure you begin paying, and make sure that you participate in the ministry. Those are the things that make us members of a church. 
Again, thank you so much for being a part of our service. Look forward to seeing you and hearing from you on next Sunday. Uh, and we will continue to process our way through for Resurrection Sunday. We're so happy, so glad that uh, you've joined us today. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you will do, and what you're doing right now. God, we glorify you for trusting us with your church. We ask you, Father God, to continue to bless us as you have these last 28 years. Lord, bless us, Father God, to lift up Jesus. Let us, Father God, to always seek to, to lift him and not deny him. God, we thank you, Father God, for blessing us to stay in your word, that we sing your word, that we pray your word, that we preach your word, that your word will be paramount here at the New Beginning Church. Lord, we thank you for our visitors. We thank you, Father God, that they've been supported. They support even if they are not members. And we thank you for it, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for those who participate, those who pray, those who pay. We thank you, Father God, for those who, press, who are present. And Lord, we thank you that when they do these four things, they have power. Thank you for the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus the Christ who has the authority to open and close doors. Lord, we ask you now to open doors for us to witness. Open doors for us to invite others to heaven. And Lord, we ask you to close doors that Satan has put before us, that he seek to devour us through these doors. And we trust you now. And we bless you now. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, "In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12, verse 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.